This is National Native News. I'm Megan Kamrak in for Antonia Gonzalez. In Montana, the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes have increased the reward for information on a missing woman to $10,000. Jermaine Austin Charlo has been missing for exactly a year as of this week. Reporter Olivia Reingold talked to Charlo's family about why they advocated for an increase in the reward. Vicki Morjo has been wondering what happened to her granddaughter for a year now. I just don't understand how people can just disappear and nobody see it. She's hoping that someone knows something and they can be enticed by a $10,000 reward. That's how much money the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribal Council approved for information about Germaine Charlo's disappearance. That decision came during a June 6th meeting. People don't want to talk because they're afraid for themselves or their families. And if they know something... People just don't come out unless they have a rebound. Guy Baker from the Missoula Police Department says that can be true. He's the lead detective on the case. There's obviously people out there that know what happened to Jermaine Charlo, and uh, $1,000 may not be enough to break someone's silence or to uh, question their loyalty to keep a secret. But he says $10,000 might be. That's why he went with Charlo's family to ask the tribal council to increase the reward earlier this month. It was previously set at $1,000. He says he's interviewed more than 50 people, conducted over a dozen searches, and submitted evidence for investigation to the crime lab. But he's still trying to figure out what happened to Charlo. She was last seen in downtown Missoula on June 16th of last year. Most definitely, obviously, there's more than a few nights I laying in bed trying to fall asleep looking at the fan, wondering where Jermaine is and what happened to her. So obviously, yeah, the, the 16th of every month doesn't go by without me thinking about that. But now, hope. Baker says that three or four people have already called in with tips since the reward was announced last week. I'm Olivia Reingold. The FBI is seeking information on the murder of a Navajo woman that happened more than four years ago. The Navajo Times reports Amy Lynn Hansen was 25 and lived in Tehachi, New Mexico. She was found dead in November 2014 from blunt force trauma about eight miles south of Gallup. Hansen was last seen two days before her death. The FBI is offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible. A subsidiary of a corporation owned by Laguna Pueblo in New Mexico has purchased a racetrack in Kentucky. Ellis Entertainment LLC, part of Laguna Development Corporation, confirmed this week it bought Ellis Park Racetrack in Henderson, Kentucky, for $11 million. Ellis plans to invest $55 million in upgrades, including renovating grandstands and barns and adding new restaurants and bars. The Albuquerque Journal reported Ellis will also expand gaming at the facility, bringing the total number of slot machines to 1,200 by sometime next year. Starting in July, the San Juan County Commission in Utah will start holding regular meetings on the Navajo Nation for the first time. The Salt Lake Tribune reports the three-member panel will hold its July 2nd meeting 90 miles from its regular meeting space in order to provide better access for the county's Navajo residents. The Tribune reports the board plans to then rotate meeting locations. The county is the state's largest in terms of square miles. It can take four hours for some residents to drive to meetings at the county seat. Since the November election, the commission has a two-member Navajo majority for the first time. That came about after a federal judge ordered the county to redraw district boundaries as a result of a lawsuit first filed by the Navajo Nation in 2012. The board's only non-Navajo member opposed the rotating meeting location plan. The commission also started broadcasting its meetings live on Facebook in March. For National Native News, I'm Megan Kamrick in for Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by BNSF Railway, moving our economy for over 165 years. Our vision is to operate injury and accident free with safety programs, training, and technology. More at bnsf.com slash tribal relations. For Native Americans affected by domestic violence, the Strong Hearts Native Helpline offers peer-to-peer support and resources. It's safe, confidential, and toll-free at 844-7-NATIVE. Program support by the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.